Right, now we've been working on wind walls and wind catchers and a few folks have suggested these things, PC fans, because basically uh, you let a bit of wind blow over there and if the wind's strong enough and it turns fast enough you can light an LED and there's a load of YouTube videos about that and they're pretty cool and pretty tempting because of course everything is made up and all we've got to do is get a few and stack them and we'd have a wind wall and these things, well they breed like rabbits, don't they? I have at least 30 of them and I keep collecting them every time I take a piece of equipment apart. Now again, there are lots of YouTube videos how to convert these to generators and I've done one myself and they're really quite simple. They're usually held on at the back here with a little um, washer. You pluck the washer off and this will come straight off. Sometimes you've got clips and you give it a bit of a press and you'll separate it out into the wheel itself and the back piece. And there's the stator, which is the bit that generates. And in the fan, you'll see a ring, which is the magnet bit. And that's the bit that rotates around. You remove that stator and you do that just by twisting and pulling it off. You get the stator piece with a circuit board. Now, what we're really interested in are the coils, and there's only three. There's L1, L2, and L3. L1 and L2 are the beginning and end, and L3 is where two coils are joined together. Sometimes it's written on the board, sometimes you just have to look at it, and you'll be able to see two wires going into one leg. That's the one you don't want. And the other two legs have one wire going into each of them. And all you have to do is solder onto those legs, stick the whole thing back together, and instead of having a fan, you now have a generator. So dead quick, dead easy to do. And you'll see them lighting up LEDs. Because the question is, exactly how much power do they generate? And is it worth doing it? So I took one, converted it, measured the blade length, and the blade length that I used was two centimeters. If I put that into a calculator, it will give me a figure that I can expect a two centimeter blade and a 3.5 meter per second wind to generate. Okay, so this blade diameter, sorry, blade length here is two centimeters. Now I've got a mark on the bench here from this fan, and when I turn this fan on its single th uh, setting, at that point there when I measured the wind speed, it was 3.5 meters per second. So if I take my fan that's been altered to be a generator and stick that there, you'd expect it to generate, and it does generate. The problem is, what it generates is actually quite embarrassing. It's, it's ridiculous. It's in the sort of microamps level. I mean, it spins, but it generates next to nothing. Um, this is an 80 centimeter fan. And if we use a 120 centimeter fan, we can get it to light an LED. If you use an 80 centimeter fan at that wind speed, we can't. So it's just ridiculously low. The usual explanation given is that fan blades are designed to pull air in and not to extract energy out, so don't expect great efficiency. And that seemed quite reasonable, but it was seriously disappointing because that is so easy to do. Now, obviously, we want to make a wind wall, so I was thinking, how could this actually be done? Now, if we got a sheet of material and drilled holes in the same size as the fan inlet, so a hole that size, 80 millimetres, we could screw all of these to the back plate and we would create ourselves a wind wall. So I did that on this one. This plate here is 12 centimetres and we've got an 80 millimetre hole in it, which is where the fan blade is. And you'll notice it's reversed. So normally that's the way around people blow it onto. This one, I'm coming from the back where the blades are actually reversed because it works in a particular direction. Now this is surprising actually. So I've got this lighting an LED and we've got our meter reading right there. If I pop it at my mark where I'm expecting 3.5 millimeters per second wind speed, we'll give that turbine this a little time, time to blow and get going. Okay, let me give you a close-up of that in operation and the test. Now we're increasing from microwatts to milliwatts, so it may not sound particularly great, but if you think about the improvement it's made, it's a thousandfold for sticking a bit of card around it. That's incredible to my mind. What I've got here is a hundred PC fans, all the same size. Now, 
I've got to do exactly the same thing with them, and that is pluck off that little bit of rubber, take off the uh, washer, pop that off, desolder them, resolder them. When you do that once, it's not too hard. When you have to do it a hundred times, it's going to take a little bit of patience. But then, so does any form of world domination, doesn't it? So, my next task, open these up and get them all converted. I always find this slightly hilarious, actually. So, in one clip you say, oh, hey, I've got to do this. In the next clip, two seconds later, you've done it. Bear in mind, this is quite a job, and it took a day to do, okay? But I've got a hundred of the rotors there, a hundred of the stator bodies, there's the little plugs, there's the little washers. We've got all of the circuit boards right here, and here we've got a hundred coils. Now, I've got to solder the wires that I've actually cut off from the previous ones and so um, tinned both ends. I've got to solder them to L1 and L2. Now, remember, they're the ends of the coils. Easy to recognise them they're going to be the two pins with the greatest resistance. So on these, if I connect up between two pins, I get 44 ohms. Connect up the other two pins, another 44 ohms. Connect up the end pins, you get 88 ohms, because you've got two coils. So they're dead easy to recognise, just to take a resistance reading. And then, obviously, we need to solder one wire onto one end and the other wire onto the other end, and that's what I need to do now. Let's get on with that. There we go, a whole lot of PC fans now turned into generators. So obviously what we want to do now is use these to build our wind wall, which mostly means actually connecting it to a board. And what I've got here is a bit of 18mm plywood. Then I'm going to drill a load of holes in here at 78mm, which is what that is, and screw these onto the back. Obviously they have the hole in it. And I'm going to place those 120mm uh, apart. So I now have to mark up this board and drill a load of holes. There you go, finished. A whole load of PC fans screwed to a bit of plywood. And if I turn this over, what you can see is, there we go, there's a whole load of holes that way that the wind blows through. Doesn't that look awesome? So it's pitch black outside because it's uh, actually half past eight that I'm doing this. So I've set the wall up and I've got a blower here to simulate the wind. And I'm measuring the wind right at the centre and at this side of the hole there to get an idea of what kind of wind is going through there. And I'm getting wind speed reading of 4.2 metres per second. Now, um, these blades are two centimetre blade length. So you've got that, you can put it into a HAWT calculator, like Omni calculator. So once you've done that, of course, you've got how much power is going in and we can measure how much power is coming out. And to do that, I've got a little LED that I've put on there as it's low, because we're talking about milliwatts. And if I measure that, I get about 12 milliamps at about three volts, 2.8 to three volts. Now, I'm not sure <laughs> if that's right or not, because if you work that out, of course, you're getting somewhere in the region of, um, what would that be? Don't trust my math, remember. Uh, but it's somewhere around about 30 milliwatts. So on this quick sort of, you know, sample, then actually it does surprisingly well. And I'm kind of not surprised, because the whole wind obviously is being buffeted here. Spinning this, you've only got one way to go, and that's through there, and then we've got a reduced pressure on the other side. And so this particular wind wall design is looking very promising. So Bernoulli's principle is actually really simple. It describes a situation in fluids. It's for non-compressible fluids, but air moving less than max speed does the same thing. But Bernoulli's principle states that if the fluid is moving, that is, it increases in speed, there's a decrease in static pressure. That's it. Bernoulli actually didn't work out the mathematics, somebody else did it for him. That principle you see in operation in things like aircraft. An aircraft wing, it's got a blunt nose and it has one curved edge that is longer than the other edge. And what that means is the air has to move quicker over the longer edge and that creates a pressure differential, it creates a drop in pressure. Because the air under the wing has a higher pressure and it gets it tries to get to the low pressure area, but the wing is in the way. So it acts across the whole surface of the wing and that's where we get lift from. 
because we get lift, we get aircraft flight. Another example of this is actually in a carburetor. If you take a cross section of a carburetor and look at that tube, you'll see it's like two aircraft wings. It's a Venturi tube, and of course the same thing happens. We get an increase in speed and we get a drop in pressure. That drop in pressure can be used to suck the fluid up, which in this case is petrol, atomize it, spray it into your engine. So Venturi tubes use Bernoulli's principle, or rather they operate on Bernoulli's principle, and they're tremendously useful for lots and lots of things. Unfortunately, they're actually a little bit difficult and uh, expensive to make, and that's a shame because they have another really good use, and that is in shrouding wind turbines. If you put a venturi or a shroud around a wind turbine, of course you get exactly the same effect. In fact, you get two effects. One, you've increased the surface area that the wind can actually hit. Two, you get an increase in speed. And three, you get a reduction in pressure. So shrouds have been put onto wind turbines to increase their efficiency up to and beyond the BETS limit. I mean, it's really a bit of a cheat because you're using a bigger area, obviously. But they're great for things like wind turbines if you're going to run a single wind turbine for, turbine for getting more out of it. Only problem is they're big, they're lumpy, they take a lot of their material and they're expensive to make, which is why an awful lot of wind shroud turbines have in fact failed to make it to market. So it would be great if we could find a cheaper solution. Now Venturi tubes are used a lot in industry actually for fluid flow. They measure fluid flow with them and of course industry is driven very often by cost. And they came up with a thing called the orifice plate. The orifice plate is astonishingly simple. It's a flat plate with a hole in it. And it turns out that a flat plate with a hole in it behaves in the exact same way as a Venturi tube. It's only one tiny thing, it loses a bit of energy. But you always give something up. So if you give up a little bit of energy efficiency because you're getting a huge reduction in cost, then the cost of your energy produced actually goes up. And that's the thing I'm interested in. It's a plank of wood with some holes drilled in it, and it's not there just to hold the fans in place. Actually, it is in fact an orifice plate. So what I've done is I've made easily a whole bunch of venturis without having to muck around with egg cartons and plastic cups, and you do it all in one by drilling the holes out. Now, as I said, there is a small loss of efficiency, but I can pay for that because I haven't had to make 100 plastic cups to fit happens is the same thing that happens in a venturi. So the wind hits here. We create a speed and low pressure which draws the wind in from about halfway between. I know it's about halfway between because I experimented to find what this distance was to get the most power out for the spacing of the different fans that I put on there. And this functions as a venturi because it is an orifice plate. Now, of course, they're fans, so behind them they have this extra little bit like that. So we have created, cheaply and easily, a whole load of ducted wind turbines just by taking a thick piece of wood and drilling some holes in it. Now, each of these fans has been converted to a generator, remember, and the generator is wired into a little rectifier there, and then from each rectifier I've taken the plus and the minus, and they're arranged in columns. So there's a column that way and a row that way. There are ten rows and nine col uh, sorry, there are ten columns and nine rows. So in each column I've wired the fans in parallel to each other, so the ampage adds up but the voltage remains the same. And those are the output wires for one of those columns. Now here they're individual so I can test them individually just to see if I've got an error. But when I've tested those I can wire those up again in series or parallel to get the final output. Now all we've got to do is get a bit of wind on this and get some readings from it.
Okay, so I measure that wind speed with this little anemometer here, and it gives you a wind speed about 2.4 meters per second, something like that. And when I read the meter, we got two at 1.7 volts, giving me about 3.4 watts. This is 1.2 meters by 1.08 meters, so that's the kind of area you're looking at. Now, I'm pretty sure this is all very ballpark because, it, I mean, you know, it's not hugely accurately read, but it is telling me we are in the ballpark. So this is performing quite nicely, actually, given the rough and ready readings and the fact that we're in a car park in Canterbury. No doubt we get this up, then we'll get a better reading out of it. If I had a wind tunnel, wouldn't that be awesome? I don't. So little anemometer is giving me a guide to where we are with this thing. And where we are with this thing, I think, is pretty acceptable, given the uh, cost that it cost me to make. Because as far as I can see, it's performing at about the same level as any wind turbine of this area would perform. So I realised, actually, when I was shooting the main video, that I'd forgotten to mention the test conditions. <laughs> I know it's going to cause people to complain. So I had that little anemometer to read the wind speed and the wind speed varied between about 0.8 meters per second and about three meters per second. It was tested under a resistive load. So basically I put a light bulb on it, a filament light bulb, and I read the uh, voltage and the ampage separate, which I know you're supposed to read them the same. But you got to remember, this is not an absolute 100% scientific thing where we can say categorically, hey, that performs such and such. All we're doing is building a wind wall out of old PC fans and see if it can produce an acceptable amount. And turns out, given the wind speed, actually, it really can. It's pretty much on a par with a wind turbine that you would, in fact, buy. HAWT type is the type that I measured against. Taking the HAWT to a 0.6 metre um, blade length and the same wind speed and what the expected output would be, and this performs in the region of that, it would seem, and that's good enough for me, and it's certainly good enough to suggest to me that building a turbine of that type from scrap materials you found uh, lying around is probably worth your effort of doing. It was a considerable amount of effort, obviously, nowhere near... Um, I'm oh, sorry, far in excess of the Savonius type. And remember, we did have done two of these different types. So if anybody's really got a complaint with what I did in terms of recording the measurements, then hey, you know the answer, build one yourself and see. It's quite easy to do, a little time consuming, but not particularly technically challenging. It certainly, I thought, was of great interest and it answered a question that a few people have asked me, specifically a couple of members have asked me to look at this. Uh, and so uh, I've diverted the wind wall experiments to compare it to the PC fan. But of course, we still have, as I say, that Savonius type. Okay, so clearly I've made myself two wind walls. This one, a Savonius type, if you remember, made from uh, water guttering and builder's board. And this one made from PC fans. Now, that one was pointed out to me as a, an artist drawing, which I then put into real life. And this one was suggested by somebody, a couple of people actually, to give it a go and see what happened. So I've built them both, and they both respond actually surprisingly well. Now, of course, the next thing you really want to do is have a kind of wind wall face-off, or if you like, a wall-off. So my friend from Intelligent Tinkering, Ross, has decided, uh, came down and said, hey, Rob, how about we stick those in the van and take them up on a hill? So in a couple of weeks, that's exactly what we're going to do. It's a couple of weeks because I still have a little bit to do with this. This one, remember, is uh, 20 centimetres across and 24 centimetres between centres. I think we can place those much closer, and that's what I want to do with that. This one is the one that we've been testing in this video. Anyway, watch out for the up and coming video. I hope you enjoyed this one so far. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.